Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie. Here we talk about true crime, unsolved mysteries, case files, you name it. If you're not new here, then hey girl, how you been? I know it's been a while, but I'm so glad that you're back for a new episode. And if true crime is your kind of thing, then let's get started. Jeffrey Dahmer was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on May 21st, 1960 to Lionel and Joyce Dahmer. So that makes him a, a Gemini. So shout out to the Geminis out there. From all accounts that I could find, Dahmer was a happy child who enjoyed typical, you know, toddler activities. It wasn't until age four after he underwent a hernia surgery that they say that his personality began to change from like this nice, happy, sociable child to become increasingly withdrawn. Following the birth of his younger brother and then uh, the family's frequent moves as well, you know, by his early teens, he was all the way disengaged, tense, and he was largely friendless witness. His facial expression transformed from the sweet, childish smile to a blank, emotionless stare, a look that remained with him throughout the rest of his life. Now, let's back it up a minute and go back to his childhood. Now, at age five, while living in Milwaukee area, Dahmer reportedly tricked a friend into sticking a, his hand into a wasp nest and getting stung. So that was like one of the first accounts that they was like, mm, he might not be all the way right. Now, Dahmer's family did end up moving to Central Ohio when he was four. And it was a lonely time for him because his family lived in this rural area. Dahmer had no playmates, according to um, a lot of witnesses and in Ohio at the age of seven years old Dahmer reportedly grew attached to his teacher he had caught tadpoles in a swamp near his home and gave these little baby frogs to his teacher as a gift right well it was said that Dahmer got very angry when he learned that the teacher gave these same little frog tadpoles to another student Dahmer killed the boys tadpoles by dumping motor oil into their water filled containers in the boys garage like and this was all at seven years old um now it was said that i'm concerned that age seven he's killing animals becker would say this was his teacher now dama reportedly showed a strong interest in internal organs by the age of eight when his father lionel showed him how to clean fish at their new home in Bath, Ohio. Dahmer developed a strong friendship while living in Ohio, according to Becker. Now, the same time his parents' marriage was crumbling. It was, his mother was depressed and she was on medication. And at the age of 10, Dahmer and his friend often played a game he would invent, according to Becker, um, in which stick figures were destroyed during the game. Dahmer's first strong friendship halted after the sixth grade. The boy's mother told the best friend not to spend so much time with Jeffrey. This is what she said, because she was worried that he would develop a homosexual relationship. Now, Becker, who, as I said, was his um, one of his mentors, said Dahmer reportedly took this forced backup breakup, you know, as a slap in his face, it was his only friend. And although Dahmer realized as a teenager that he was sexually attracted to men, not women, he reportedly wasn't interested in his friend in that type of way. Dahmer claimed that his compulsions towards necrophilia and murder began around the age of 14. But it appears that the breakdown of his parents' marriage and their a divorce that took a few years, you know, later may have been the, it was like the icing on the cake for him and what actually turned his thoughts into these actions. At age 16, Dahmer reportedly kept the head of a dog on a stake, regularly inspecting the internal organs of the dead animals and planned to reconstruct dead dogs from their bleached bones. Like he was trying to piece it back together, y'all. And he began showing a little to no interest in hobbies or social interactions with friends or kids his age as he entered uh, adolescence, turning instead to examining these animal carcasses and heavy drinking, entertaining. He was 
drinking all the time throughout high school, but it didn't stop him from graduating in 1978. It was just the three weeks later that the 18-year-old committed the first murder. Due to his parents unfolding divorce that summer, Jeffrey was left in the family home alone. Now he sees this opportunity to act on the dark thoughts that have been growing in his mind over all this time. He picked up a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks and offered to take him back to his father's house to drink a beer, right? Sounds, sounds okay back then, that's what they did. But when Hicks decided to leave Dahmer's house after having this little drink, Dahmer hit him in the head in the back of the head with a 10 pound dumbbell. Dahmer dismembered the corpse of his first victim, Stephen, packed the body parts in a plastic bag and then buried them in his parents' home. He later exhumed the remains, crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them across a wooded area like ravine and later admitted to killing him simply because he wanted Hicks to stay with him. He didn't want him to leave. Now, by the time of his first killing, Dahmer's alcohol consumption had spun out of control. He dropped out of Ohio State University. Go Buckeyes. I'm from Ohio, if y'all didn't know. And after one quarter term, he, uh, he dropped out after one quarter term. And recently, re his remarried father insisted that he join the army. Now, Dahmer did enlist in late December 1978 and was posted to Germany shortly after joining. His drinking problem did persist and in early 1981, just after one year, the army discharged him. Although German authorities would later investigate possible connections between Dahmer and murders that took place in the area during that time, it's not believed that he took any more victims while serving in the armed forces. It was still only Stephen Hicks at the time. Following his discharge from the dis Following his discharge from the army, Dahmer returned home to Ohio and was later arrested a year later for disorderly conduct, prompting his father to send Dahmer to live with his grandmother back in Wisconsin. Now he continued drinking heavily, often got into trouble with the police. And then in August, 1982, he was arrested after exposing himself at a state fair. Now in September, 1986, he was arrested and charged with public exposure yet again, after being arrested and accused of masturbating in public, he served 10 months in jail. Soon after his release, he was jailed again for sexually fondling a 13 year old boy in Milwaukee. From this, he was given a sentence of five years probation one year at a work release camp and was required to register as a sex offender. He was released two months later early from the work program and moved into Milwaukee apartments in May of 1990. There, despite regular appointments with his probation officer, because he was checking in, he would remain free to commit four more murders that year and eight more in 1991. His father, unable to understand what was happening to his son, continued to stand by him, making certain that he had good legal counsel. He also began to accept that there was little he could do to help the demons that seemed to be ruling his son's behavior. Uh, he did realize that his son was missing a basic human element, a conscience. Now, if that's not a red flag, I don't know what is if your parents know that you don't have a, a conscience. In September 1987, while on probation on the molestation charges, Dahmer met 26-year-old Stephen Toomey. I'm sorry if I said his last name wrong. And the two of them, they spent the night drinking heavily, cruising gay bars before going to Dahmer's hotel room. Now, when Dahmer awoke from his drunk and sober, he found Stephen dead. He he later stated that he had no memory of actually murdering him, implying that he had committed the crime on some sort of blackout impulse, is what he called it. Dahmer put Stephen's body into a suitcase, which he took to his grandmother's basement. There, he discarded the body in the garage after dismembering it, but not before gratifying his sexual narcoleptic desires, okay? The killings occurred sporadically after Stephen, with two victims in 1988, one in 1989, and four in 1990. He continued to lure these unsuspecting men from bars or solicited prostitutes who he then drugged, raped, and strangled. 
At this point, though, Dahmer also began carrying out particularly disturbing acts with their corpse, continuing to use their bodies for intercourse, taking photographs of the dismemberment process, preserving with scientific precision his victim's skulls and, you know, areas for display and even retaining parts for consumption. Dahmer began killing around one person each week by the summer of 1991. He became infatuated with the idea that he could turn his victims into zombies to act as useful and submissive sexual partners. He used many different techniques such as drilling holes into their skulls and injecting hydrochloric acid or boiling water into their brains awful stuff. Soon neighbors began to complain about strange noises and awful smells coming from Dahmer's apartment. On one occasion, a, lob a lobotomized victim left unattended, even made it out onto the street to ask several bystanders for help. When Dahmer returned, however, he successfully convinced the police that this irrational young man who had just had his brain drilled into and chemicals put into it was just extremely intoxicated boyfriend. The officers failed to run a background check that would have revealed Dahmer's sex offender status, allowing him just that narrow escape his fate for just a little longer. That poor guy could have gotten help if the police just did their jobs. May 27, 1991, his 13th victim was 14-year-old Karotic. I don't want to say the last name, we'll just say S, who was also the younger brother of the boy Dahmer was convicted of molesting in 1989. Well, early in the morning, this young man was seen wandering the streets, nude and disordered, disorderly, just all out of place. When police arrived on the scene were paramedics, two women who were standing close to this confused man. Now, this is the man I was just telling you guys about who almost escaped and Jeffrey Dahmer, he told police that, oh, this is just my 19-year-old lover. We've been drinking, and the two had a, you know, just this little argument. So don't, don't mind him. We've just been drinking too much. Well, the police escorted Dahmer and this boy back to Dahmer's apartment, much against the protest of the women who were just so sure that, you know, something must be wrong with this guy, the way he was hollering who had witnessed this man trying to fight off Dahmer before the police had arrived. The police found Dahmer's apartment neat and other than noticing an unpleasant smell, nothing seemed, you know, out of place. They So they, they left this young man under Dahmer's care. Later, the police officers, John uh, Balzerak, Balzerak, sorry, Joseph Gabrish, joked that there's, guys, I'm horrible with these names, just and just and just. No, in every episode, I'm going to mess them up at least three times, okay? But anyways, these two officers, Josh and Joe, they joked with their dispatch about reuniting the lovers. Within, And then within hours, Dahmer had killed him and performed his usual rituals on this body. In June and July 1991, Dahmer killed. Killings had escalated to, like I said, once a week up until July 22nd. When Dahmer was unable to hold captive his 18th victim, which was Tracy Edwards. Now, Dahmer lured Tracy Edwards into his home with the promise of cash in exchange for his company, which we know what that means. While inside, though, Edwards was then forced into the bedroom by Dahmer with a butcher knife. During the struggle, Edwards was able to get free and escape out into the streets where he was able to flag down a police officer's car where the pro police arrived at Dahmer's apartment. Now, Edwards alerted them to the knife that was in the bedroom. And according to Edwards, Dahmer tried to handcuff him and then the two struggled. Edwards escaped and was spotted at around midnight by police. And with the handcuffs still dangling from his wrist, assuming he had somehow escaped from the authorities, the police stopped him. So the police thought that this man had escaped authorities because he had a, the, the handcuffs on his wrist. But Edwards immediately told them about his encounter with Dahmer and led them to this apartment. Dahmer opened his door to the officers and answered all their questions very calmly. 
he agreed to turn over the key to unlock Edward's handcuff and moved to the bedroom to get, uh, he went to the bedroom to go get it. Now, one of the officers went with him and as he glanced around the room, he noticed photographs of what photographs of what appeared to be parts of bodies and a refrigerator full of human skulls. So right away, they decided to place Dahmer under arrest and attempted to handcuff him. But his calm demeanor quickly changed and he began to fight and struggle and unsuccessfully, though, to get away. With Dahmer finally under control, the police then began their initial search of the apartment and quickly discovered skulls and other various body parts, along with extensive photo collections Dahmer had taken, documenting all his crimes. The details of what was found in Dahmer's apartment were horrific, matching only to his confessions as to what he had did to his victims. Items found in Dahmer's apartment included things like there was a human head, and three bags of organs, which included two hearts, were found in the refrigerator as along with everything else, the head. There were three heads, a torso, and various internal organs were inside of a freestanding freezer. So not only did he have his refrigerator full of body parts, he had the freezer too. Chemicals, um, chloroform, plus two skulls two hands and male genital were found in the closet so there were heads everywhere a filing cabinet that contained three painted skulls a skeleton a dried scalp male genitals and various photographs of his victims so these are the different locations that they found all this stuff just in his apartment there was also a box with two skulls in it a 75 gallon vault filled with acid and three torsos inside of that. He, they found victims identifications. They found bleach used to bleach the skulls and the bones. They found all this evidence in his house. The, and there was incense sticks. Neighbors often complained that, to Dahmer about the smell coming from his apartment. So he decided to get these incense sticks. So they found these as well. They found tools claw hammers, hand saws, drills, different drill bits and needles. They found various videos, some pornographic videos, um, blood, the, his mat, there was a mattress that was just blood soaked and blood splattered. Then they also had the nerve to find a King James Bible. Lord knows there's no way he actually used it. So in all, a total of seven skulls were found in his apartment as well as human hearts in the freezer, like we said. Uh, an altar was also constructed with, the, with candles and human skulls in his closet. After being taken into custody, Dahmer confessed and began just going into this gruesome detail of all his crimes to the authorities. He didn't hold back nothing. Dahmer was indicted on set 17 murder charges, which were later reduced to 15. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Much of the testimony was based on Dahmer's 160 page confession and from various witnesses who testified that Dahmer's urges were so strong that he was just not in control of his actions. The defense sought to prove that he was in control though and capable of planning out all these horrific and manipulating and covering up crimes that he must have been aware he wasn't that insane if he was able to plan like this now the jury did deliberate for five hours and returned a verdict of guilty on 15 counts of murder Dahmer was sentenced to 15 life terms a total of 937 years in prison after his sentencing Dahmer calmly read his four-page statement to the court he apologized for his crimes and he ended the four page note with, I hated no one. I knew I was sick or evil or both. Now I believe I was sick. The doctors have told me about my sickness and now I have some peace. I know I have much harm I have caused. Thank God there will be no more harm that I can do. I believe that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save me from my sins. 
I asked for no consideration. Now, Dahmer was sent to the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin. At first, he was separated from the general prison population for his own safety. But by reports, he was considered a model prisoner who had adjusted well to prison life and was self-proclaimed born-again Christian, y'all. Gradually, he was permitted to have some contact with other inmates after some time. And on November 28, 1994, Dahmer and inmate Jesse Andersons were beaten to death by fellow inmate Christopher Scaver while on the work detail in the prison gym. Anderson was in prison for killing his wife, and Scaver was a schizophrenic convicted of first-degree murder. For reasons unknown, the guards left the three alone for 20 whole minutes. Kind of sounds like a cover-up. But they returned and found Anderson dead and Dahmer dying from severe head trauma. Dahmer died in the ambulance before reaching the hospital. In Dahmer's will, he had a request upon his death that his body be cremated and as soon as possible. This is what he wanted. But some medical researchers wanted his brain preserved so it could be studied. Now, Lionel Dahmer wanted to respect his son's wishes, though, and did cremate all remains of his son. His mother felt his brain should go to research. The two parents went to court, and the judge sided with Lionel, the father. So after more than a year, Dahmer was released. Dahmer's body was released from being held as evidence, and the remains were cremated. So that's the story, y'all. That is today's story of Jeffrey Dahmer and this this horrific, horrible person that he was. Um, I think it's pretty crazy that he got away with it for so long. But tell me what you guys think down in the comments down below. And please make sure that you give your girl a like, subscribe, and just um, tell me what you guys think down in the comments. And can't wait to hear you guys and I will get another video up as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.